Hey, hi, hell, oh my fucking God, I never have a battery that's charged. Please excuse my outburst. Hey, hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess, I'm here to give you my April wrap up, which, how, how am I talking about my April wrap up? How is it not, st okay, we're not gonna do it. Just know that every day time is fucking with me. Somebody is fucking with the clocks and I don't like it because this is bullshit, it's a conspiracy. I would say I wouldn't, won't stand for it, but I really don't have a choice anyway. Um, my wrap up of the things I read in April and they were all physical books. So I feel very proud. So I have one that I DNF'd. I have two uh, ARCs or advanced reader copies and then I have two books that were on my backlist. So all owned by me. I think that's wonderful. Good job, Jessica. So the one that I DNF'd I'll start with first and I... You know what, I'm not afraid to speak my truth because just because everyone else loves it doesn't mean that I have to. And I know that some of my mutuals here in the booktube community, some of my patrons loved this book, this collection, um, and I did not. So this is Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado, who is a very popular name I feel like on booktube. Uh, but their other book is... I forgot but now I'm like I don't know if I want to read that one because I don't think her style is for me. So these are short stories that tell talk about um, the realities of women's lives and the violence visited upon their bodies which sounded really cool and again I've always heard praise for this. My problem was like the first story was probably the best one and I still was like okay and then the second one I didn't get it all and then what was the third one? No, the third one, uh, and then we get to the fourth one. I think it's the fourth one. And it's called Especially Heinous. Does that sound familiar to you? SVU, that's what this 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 one is about. And it's like one of the longest, let me show you. It is, this is, you know, it's like, I don't know, 60, yeah, it's like 60 pages is the longest story in here. And at first I was like, okay, what is this gonna be about? Cause it says 272 views of Law & Order SVU. And then it has like little paragraphs that kind of like summarize the episodes. And I have recently started re SVU from season one, episode one. So I was like, wait, some of these sound familiar. And then you turn the page and it keeps going like that. It's all just little, it's just going through episodes. It just, it just keeps going through SVU episodes. And I don't get it. And I didn't like it. And I tried listening to the audiobook along with it. I just was like, nothing was computing. So then I was trying to just read it with my eyeballs. And I was like, th what is the point? So I know that there probably are people who really want to defend this to me. Don't. Don't seriously, I'm glad you love it. Just don't waste your time, your typing, your breath to try to sell me on this. I'm good. This is not for me. This was not made for my brain. This made my brain feel very small. And I know it's already small, but this made it feel a little smaller. This is not for me. So don't waste your time. Just know that you love it and I'm happy for you. If you would like to buy this, it's up on my Pango shop. Ah ha ha, promo. Anyway, that's the only one I DNF'd. Well, like, that I kept track of. Actually, there's probably more DNFs because I've been DNF a lot of ebooks, but I can't remember what they are right now and I, I don't wanna talk about it. Anyway. <laughs> So let's talk about the arcs. So I first, I received this from Razorbill, um, who is under Penguin Teen, and this one's called Thin Air by Kelly M. Parker, and this is a young adult thriller. Or is it a mystery? I don't know, Mara could tell you better. I get them very confused, but this is set, oh, it says, it says why thriller. <laughs> this is set on a plane. There weren't snakes on the plane, but there were teens on the plane. <laughs> Okay, anyway, so this one comes out. Oh, this doesn't come out till October. For some reason, I thought it came out now. My bad. Uh, I didn't write a review for it or anything. I need to. 
Anyway, this comes out in October and we have, it says eight hours, 12 contestants, one flight, not everyone survived. So we have a prep school and students who were chosen. There were like two students from 10 or 12 like prep schools around the country uh, who are going on this trip to Paris uh, by, um, in, it's sponsored by like this billionaire or whatever to basically compete for scholarships for college. Uh, and in the reality that is America, very, very it makes sense <laughs> i would i would have done this however comma they don't know that the the competition the challenge the task start on the plane and they so they were not prepared for uh what do you mean i thought we had this time to enjoy this flight because they're flying like a private plane of course really bougie high class and things start happening and maybe some people start dying and it's like who is it who's it is it the billionaire it's just like a fucked up game you wanted to play is it someone is it one of the students like obviously there's limited people on this plane 12 contestants but there's also the crew so it's like who is it is it the big man is it the crew is it a pilot because you know there'd be two. Oh, did i just rhyme bars so i thought this was really fun i won't say like oh my god it blew me away and i didn't see certain things coming but i just enjoyed it for what it was um it was just it was a fun it was fun in trying to figure out who it was and like why there's also some sadness because the main character the girl that we're getting her perspective for most of the time uh has been living in a car with her mother they're experiencing houselessness and so she really needs this but then everyone on the plane has some kind of secret and those secrets are starting to come out and it's like some people are denying some of them. Some people are saying these are true. Uh, just a wide range of personalities on here. There is, because it is a young adult, there is um, some romance in here. I won't say it. it's not, definitely not the main thing, but there are some feelings between the main character and uh, two boys, but I won't say it's necessarily a love triangle. I guess kind of, but kind of not. It doesn't last throughout the whole thing. But anyway, this was just a good time. I won't, I'm gonna be honest and say it's not something that's gonna stand out in my memory. Um, I'm going to give this away because I don't need it. I'm not gonna read it again, but it was just a fun time. I didn't get attached to any of the characters, but the plot was entertaining and it was a quick read. It's like three, barely three, it's not even 300 pages. Or it's like right at 300 pages. It's literally 301 pages, so a quick, um, fast paced read. So I think um, it's worth giving a try. Then I also, the author sent this to me. Hello, Jessica. This is called Ruby Ramos's Recipe for Success. Oh my God, I got that on the first attempt by Jessica Parra. I don't know. Sorry if I rolled that too hard. This does come out this month. And she messaged, she emailed me and was like, I know you don't love like young adult romance, but this has baking in it. If you can't see this cute ass cover, look at this. Ugh. And so she was correct because I thought this was, this was just really enjoyable. I think the more I know about a book and not necessarily the plot, if I know this is supposed to be marketed towards young adult, this is supposed to be light and sweet. This is, you know, just, I have a good idea of what I'm going into. I have a better chance at enjoying it, this. And I normally do not reach for young adult contemporary, but this was sweet. This was fun. This made me hungry um because of course she's talking about baking and she is um i believe in like her senior year of high school and her parents own a bakery just opened a new one but they want better for her they want her to be a lawyer so they're like focus on your school she works at the bakery part-time but she wants to bake more and they're like no you need to focus on school you need to focus on getting into college because you're going to be a lawyer that's it that's your only option i forgot to mention this is also a story of immigrants because her parents are from Cuba. And obviously, um, I'm not an immigrant or I'm not a first generation, but I've heard that a lot when you're a first generation kid. That there's so many pressures on you to go into these, um, you know, higher paying professions. Uh, and there's a lot of pressure on the kids. Um, and so while that is like how the parents are, you see them change and, you know, realize what she really wants to pursue over time. And then you also, um, there's like this really sweet part at the end with the mom in relations to school. And I just thought it was so precious. And I just loved, yeah, the parents are great. I love parents in a young adult book. It really just makes it even better.
and as a a dutiful child that's what she's doing until there's a baking competition and she wants to enter herself into that well obviously for youth a baking no I think it's a baking competition for all persons I don't think you had to be a youth yeah because there were different different ages but let me tell you one of the things the first things they were baking in this book I don't want to embarrass myself and pronounce it incorrectly bo is it boligios bolilos bolillos I don't know but they're a type of bread and I uh already have recipes saved on Pinterest because I want to make them they just sound delicious and just all the things she kept creating in here I that's my one problem about reading books that are set around someone who's a chef or a baker is <sighs> I just every time I was reading I was like well I need a cupcake or I need a cookie or I need something and I will say let me just double check to make sure this is not in the back and again this isn't a finished copy so it could be I don't know if the finished copy will have that but I honestly was like give me the recipe for that bread or for all of it honestly not like that's a that's not a like marking anything off of the book um I just was like looking at the back and I'm like dang I wish I had this recipe because I always say I got the recipe off Pinterest but I don't know if that's authentic you know what I'm saying so I would just say when you read this make sure you have some bread butter a uh, muffin cookies brownies something or you'll just be salivating all over the pages but this of course is a romance she's supposed to be focused on school she meets this surfer boy and I just liked that he was just a nice guy like I was like oh, I just love this for her how they met it felt organic it wasn't like love at first sight but you know it does progress rather quickly because it is a young adult book and it's not too long but I just actually really enjoyed this this felt soothing this was comforting to read um I love the relationship between her parents because they there there was still like the fine line especially with her dad he knew what she really wanted to do but also was like look you you know what mom says you got to go to college but still was like letting her you know if he would see her with a cookbook or something or a recipe was like letting it slide but I still just like they were just so so supportive and yeah this was just really sweet so you should give it a try especially if you like baking in a romance even if you normally don't go for young adult I think this would be a good one and again thank you to Jessica for sending this to me and congratulations and then the other two that were on my back list, I didn't even say. I would give this, I would give this a four, four stars. I would give Thin Air a 3.5. Uh, and so the next two, well, the last two that I read were from Ryuria Chronicles by Michael J. Sullivan. So you've heard me talk about Revelations a lot. This is the prequel series. Now he recommends reading his books in publishing order. So that would be the Revelations first then Chronicles, then the Age of Myth series, and then his new series, which I can't think of the, the title. But you also can read it in chronological order, but obviously I'm reading and publishing. Anyway, I read the first two. There's currently four out, and I think he's working on or is going to write a fifth. But so The Crown Tower, and so since this is prequel, this is before, this, the book starts before they've met each other, Royce and Hadrian. And uh, also you're getting some backstory about, what's her name? um Gwen and uh you you just hear some familiar names about like the royal family and stuff you're seeing that years before the things that take place in in Revelations and this was such a good time I don't know why I put it off for so long because I love the Revelations series so much and seeing them come together because like we heard parts of that of, of like how they started working together in Revelations but we're getting to see it seeing who they they were before and not like they've changed a lot but like they have both had effects on each other and seeing um this the evolution of Gwen and how she got to where she is which also continues into the second one um it I just uh I was like and then I was like yay and was laughing and then I was worried and it's like yes I know that they live because obviously there's the series that comes after this but they get into some precarious situations especially in this one with this damn tower and again it's just the the humor the bromance between them even if the bromance grows begr begrudgingly for Royce because he's such a grouch but he's my favorite grouch I just I just love this I love this one a little bit more than this one just because we this one was starting we were getting um 
a lot of backstory about one of the guards for the royal family in this one and not as much Hadrian and Royce in the first half so it was really going between the Hil Hilfred the guard and then we were getting to see um Gwen and her girls and how that was progressing and then the second half really took off when we were getting more Royce and Hadrian and like all of their stories all of like their storylines intersected they finally came in contact with each other so that was my only uh complaint about this one but this one you get it's prim primarily them and then Gwen um and so I of course of course I of course enjoyed this like entire thing from from start to finish and this one was just a little bit more of a slower start for me because again we're talking about that guard and it is important and it's, and I was recognizing a lot of things and characters in these stories that I obviously see in the revelations because they come after but then it's just again interesting and it's fun to see how they originally met what circumstances brought them together because like I said they always end up in some precarious situations uh but Royce is very missed nope that's not him Royce is very stabby stabby ask questions later if I'm going to ask you a question at all because you probably are dead and Hadrian is definitely the chivalrous one of the bunch he wants to think and see the good in everybody and Royce is like you're stupid everyone's terrible and I'm like well I mean Royce didn't lie <laughs> So any who's a doozy, if you read the revelations and you enjoy them, you definitely should continue with this. I hope to pick up the third one. I was going to read that one and then my brain was like, hold up, hold up, hold up. You think you're going to marathon a series? <laughs> Sit back down. And so I was like, okay, never mind. Um, and I didn't want to force my way through it, but uh, just loving these. So hopefully I can read those and then eventually get to the Age of Empire, which I think has six books and then get to, uh, I just, I, I don't have a shortage of Michael J. Sullivan books to read you know you know what I'm saying so that was it I did DNF some other things that I can't even remember so like are they worth mentioning but I would love to hear your thoughts if you've read any of these and again I mean you can do what you want it's not necessarily that I'm gonna read it but I would not say to waste your time trying to defend this book or making me reconsider or making me want to reread it I really don't I want it out of my face I don't want it in my home anymore but was a good reading month um I was like really excited to be reading things with my eyeballs and I didn't even have the audiobooks with this so I felt even I was like wow look at me I know how to read so I three and a half for thin air out in October four stars for Ruby Ramos this is out this month then I would give this one five stars and I think I gave this one like four point something I probably rounded up to five on Goodreads though because I mean oh, this is my babies like you know do you know what I'm saying so anyway oh look at all those nice pink hold up are these all the same size oh my god they're almost all the same size but they like have a slight slight oh but anyway look at me oh my god I can hang on look mm, that's why I love me a short book I can palm that look at that I can palm that thing like a basketball Oh, it's like Rondo. Okay, that's enough for me. Very quick wrap up of what I read in April. So let me know your thoughts if you read any of these or what was your most standout read from April. And you know what? This felt nice to read two new and two backlists. I'm like, look at me balancing. So if I could continue to do that. Um, that would be nice, but let's let's not count on it. But share your best read of April. And remember that even if you don't read this month, or you read one book, or you read 10 books, you're still a reader. We, you know, we are not diminished if we read less. So thank you all for watching. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. Ways to support the channel are in the description. Um, also the, the books, the titles of the books. And I hope you all stay blessed, hydrated, moisturized, and sunscreened. And I will see you in my next one. Bye.